Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Brooke Brown. I'm coming with our word today for our spiritual fitness, for you to take back and meditate on these verses of scripture, go back and apply it to your life and stand on this word because we are growing, changing, and progressing, and we are being impacted by the word so we can impact the world. We're on assignment, right? So we are going to start going through the book of Genesis today. On our last uh, sessions and series, we basically went through the book of Romans. But today, I'm going to begin in Genesis, and I'm going to go as the Holy Spirit leads me. So I don't know if God is going to have me go to every single chapter. If he does, I will. If he doesn't, then I won't. But we are starting today in Genesis chapter 1, and we will go as the Lord leads us. So today, we'll get through as much of chapter 1 as he will allow. And I want to begin in verse 1. And we are going to open up in prayer. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want notifications when I upload videos so that you can continue on this spiritual journey with us. This is a spiritual fitness class, right? And it goes with uh, prayer and the word. It's spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I say that because if you are interested in being a part of our morning prayer group Monday through Friday, as well as receiving this word Monday through Friday, the information for the morning prayer is underneath this YouTube video, as well as the link for you to get the e-booklet if you want some assistance in getting a little motivated to do your spiritual workouts. Um and get a spiritual regimen together as to, you know, how this is going to work for you so that you continue to grow in the word and in faith and in prayer so that you can be all that God purpose and that you are fruitful and beneficial, continuing to grow, not getting stagnant, lukewarm, indifferent. But we are constantly supposed to be growing, but also constantly bearing fruit. So we are to be fruitful and productive. So we're going to open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we honor you. We praise you. We just, we surrender to you even now, God. We we thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. We pray that you would pour into each of us individually and all collectively, giving us this word and understanding godly wisdom. And help our unbelief, Lord God, that we are pressing into you, walking in your word, sharing your truth with others, that we are growing, changing, and progressing, and becoming the men and women of God that you have purposed us to be. So, Father, we just thank you right now for giving us what we need, that we are spiritually nourished, that we are on overflow. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, we will continue to just hunger and thirst after righteousness that we may be filled we may be content and we may be satisfied so we give you all praise glory and honor in jesus name amen amen praise the lord so once again we're going to begin in genesis chapter one we're going to begin in the king james genesis means beginning so we are going to start in the beginning in fact um i want to remind you of the uh study bible that i have um, been encouraging you all to get uh, in the, um, oh, here it is, um, the uh, New Living Translation Life Application Study Bible has a lot of notes, has a lot of commentary, a lot of information about the different people in the Bible, has a lot of charts and comparisons and things that you can utilize to help you in your study, reference scriptures. And um, it gives you the information about each book at the very beginning. So what it does is kind of give an overview of the book, what you're reading. It gives, um, I just want to show you here. First of all, it gives you what it calls the vital statistics. So you know who wrote the book. Uh, you know um, what the original audience was, who it was originally written to, um, where it was written, the, the uh, setting, the key verse. It also gives you here just an overview of the book. And then this is with each of the books in the Bible. So it also gives us a breakdown, right, of each section. So you can break it down in sections, each book. And then it gives us the mega themes. It gives us the themes in the book, the explanation and the importance of each portion of it. So I wanted to kind of show you that because um, this book is one of the first five books, which uh, is called like the Pentateuch, the Law, the Torah. These are books that are accredited to Moses, right? And so Genesis, again, it means beginning. Uh, this was written to the originally to the people of Israel. Uh, and the key verse in uh, in Genesis is uh, chapter 1, 
verse 27, which is so God created human beings in his own image. This is the NLT. Uh, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. But we know that it tells us in verse 27 in the King James, and this is why it's one of the key verses, is because this is about us and how we were originally created before the fall of man. And so in verse 27, what it says in the King James is, so God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. This is important because... Um, we need to realize how we were originally created in the image of God, but sin has marred that image, right? And so in Christ, we are being recreated. We are being made new. We are reborn and we are being conformed into the image of Christ, um, which is what we are told in Romans 8 and 29. You can write that down if you're not familiar with that verse of scripture. But the word Genesis means beginning and in Genesis is Lots of beginnings, right? We have the beginning, um, you know, of creation. We have the beginning of man. We have the beginning of sin. We have the beginning of the first murder. We have um, the beginning when the various um, languages were brought about in chapter 11. We have the beginning of God's chosen people. We have, you know, it's just the beginning of everything. In the book of Genesis. So this is a great place to start in studies. You know, once a person has maybe gone to, maybe when they are first saved, they may go to the New Testament and maybe study like the Gospel of John just to have an understanding of who Jesus is and why he came and and, and to build their relationship with Jesus, right? But then to get a real understanding of the New Testament, it is great and helpful and beneficial to have an understanding of the Old Testament because the Old Testament is all about, uh, you know, leading us up to the New Testament. It's prophetic uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ coming. And so it is natural stories with uh, that are in the New Testament spiritual. And we'll go into that later. But in the book of Genesis, uh, it starts off, we got the story of Adam and Eve. Cain and Abel, so Adam and Eve were the first, um, you know, created um, the mother and father, you know, the first children, Cain and Abel, that are spoken of. Um, the first murder we know was Cain killing Abel. Uh, then we have the story of Noah, and this is when everything is washed out and God kind of starts all over with Noah and his family. Then you have the story of Abraham, which is going to lead us into the beginning of God's people. Uh, and then the story of Isaac and Jacob, because God's people come from Abraham, his son Isaac, Isaac's son Jacob. That's where the 12 tribes of Israel come from. And then we have the story of Joseph. So uh, we want to start off in the beginning. Um, and we're starting off again, like I said, in chapter one, and it begins by telling us what in the beginning, those are the first three words in chapter one. So it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God saw the firmament, he called the firmament, heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now I'm going to just stop by here for a minute. Okay, first of all, we want to make sure with all our getting, we get understanding, right? So as we're looking in the beginning here, first it says in the beginning, God created. This word God here, because we know that you have to look in the Old Testament was written in the Hebrew, the New Testament written in the Greek. Um, when we look at this particular word God here is Elohim, which is plural. And so oftentimes this is addressed because we're looking at the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So I want us to recognize that in the beginning, all three are present. What do I mean? Well, first of all, it tells us in verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. So we know God the Father is there. 
But then it goes on to tell us in um, verse 2, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So we have the spirit of God. So we have God the Father and we have the spirit of God. Then in verse 3, it says, and God said, let there be light and there was light. So God spoke, right? And then the light God saw the light. It was good. He spoke it, and it was. So let me just take you real quick, first of all, to the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, write these down so you can go back and reference these. I'm just wanting, wanting to look at the first three verses. So it's John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, right? And then we're going to look at verse 14. So this is what it says in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 and verse 14. It says, in the beginning was the word. So this is in the beginning again, just like it says in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? And it tells us that he said, God said, let there be light. And there was. So this says in the beginning was what? The word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. What was made? It says everything was made by him. Who? The word. And without him, who is him? The word was not anything made that was made. Nothing was made without the word. God spoke it, and it was. So it says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's verse 4. But look down at verse 14. Verse 14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is Jesus. Jesus is the word of God made flesh so in the beginning now everything was made by the word of god look in the beginning go back to genesis chapter one go back to genesis chapter one in the beginning god created the heaven and earth the earth was without form and void darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the water so we have god the father in verse one we have the spirit of god in verse two and we have jesus the word of god in verse 3 because it said God said let there be light and there was light and it tells us in John where we just read that everything was created by the word it says the word was with God in the beginning it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made so we got the word of God which is Jesus so we have the father we have the spirit and we have the son Jesus Christ all in the beginning when everything was created right so we want to understand that now also in these first verses of scripture in Genesis um, we are reminded that it tells us how the earth was first of all it tells us hold on a second when it says created when it says God created this means um, it's a word bara bara b-a-r-a -A, right um, to shape it means to um to make it means to produce so this is what god did and when you read through the whole chapter one you see that first god formed and then he filled so he was making and creating and he filled the earth so it tells us this word create it means to shape it means to cut down it means to make and it means produce so God created the heaven and the earth. And so then we look at how the earth was without form. Now what it tells us in verse uh, 2 is the earth was without form. It was void. It was dark. Right? And so when you look at without form, you get a word formless. Right? Without form. So when you look up without form... And what it means in the Hebrew, it's formless. It's a word, T-O-H-U, tohu, right? And this means formlessness. It means confusion. It means unreality. It means emptiness. 
It, so all of these things, when you think about how the earth was before it was dark, it was void, and it was formless, in confusion, empty. Um, it means desolate. It means empty space. It means nothing. It means a waste place. And so all of these things, right? So you're thinking about chaos, confusion, without form. It's empty. It's nothing. It's a wasteland. It's dark. This is how the earth was, right? So think about what does that remind you of? It reminds us of us, right? Because we were living in darkness. We were, you know, empty. We were in chaos, confusion. Before what? Before Christ. Before Christ. And so think about it. Before Christ, the Bible tells us we lived in darkness, right? And so when we come to Christ, he's the light of the world. And so then light comes in. That's where the change, that's where the transformation comes in. When Christ, when we connect with Christ and who is Christ? Christ is the word. He is the living word of God. That's what brings light, order, life. So when we look at the earth, when it was without form, it was empty, it was dark, it was void. This is the same picture. So before God spoke, let there be, it was nothing. It was dark. It was empty. It was chaos. It was confusion. It was empty. It was void. Just like us. But God spoke and he began to form and to feel and to bring order and to bring life. And that's what the word of God does for us. When we receive Jesus, the living word of God, there is order. There is restoration. There is wholeness. There is life. There is, you know, a filling up of that void. So we have to have an understanding of that. Before salvation, we're empty. That is how we are caught up in sin and, and chasing after things of the world because we have a void and an emptiness, a darkness and a confusion. We don't know who we are. We don't know how we're supposed to live. We don't know what we're supposed to do. And so we're looking for something to fill the void, the emptiness. So we're looking at the things of the world, the, the things that are temporary, the things that perish, the things that are wicked and ugly and ungodly and fruitless. And it's not until we have a relationship with Christ, the word of God, and we come in agreement with and begin to abide in him and the word begins to abide in us, then we begin to be able to see there is light, there is more understanding, there is direction, there is, you know, so it's a new life, it's starting all over. And so God began to speak and it began to bring order. So the first thing that God speaks is light. He says, let there be light. Why do I bring that up? Because over and over again, we see in the word of God, God is never, you know, we in the church and in the world, we're always separating race. We're always separating color and, and you know, uh, you know, people that are have this much money and the people that don't have money and people that are educated, people that are uneducated. We have all different kinds of ways that we separate people and communities and neighborhoods and all of these different things. However, God, in the beginning and all through the Bible, separates light and dark. Light and dark. And so the first thing that he did was he calls for light. He speaks it. And there he is. And in verse four, it says, and he divided the light from the darkness. This is what he does for us. Remember, we were walking in darkness, right? And then he tells us, come out from amongst them and be separate. The Bible tells us not to walk in darkness anymore. Some of the verses of scripture that I want you to write down so that you can go back and study it. Um, I'm going to pull some from the New Testament. Hold on a second. Um, because this is what God separates. And so this is important because 
We allow the enemy into the, the body of Christ, into the church, into our lives and separate us as believers so that we're not as strong and as bold and as, you know, power filled as we should be about doing what God has called and purposed us to do and becoming who he purposed us to be because we're making the wrong divisions and separations. We cause uh, schisms in the body, separation in the body because we're separating based off of outward appearance and what people have and don't have, what they know and what they don't know, uh, what they want and what they don't want and all these different things when only we are supposed to be separated light separated from the darkness of this world from unfruitful works of darkness and so the bible tells us um let me see let's just get a couple of these first of all um in the book of john right um i want to go to chapter three i want you to write down um Verses, John chapter 3, uh, verses 18 through 20. And this is what it says. Jesus is saying this. He's saying, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. He's talking about those that believe in him. He's saying, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, that's Jesus, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Light and darkness is always separated, because darkness is um, spoken of as evil. Unfruitful works of darkness, worldly things, ungodly things. So people that love darkness, love evil, love their wicked deeds. They hate the light. They oppose Christ. They oppose the word. And we as people of God are supposed to walk in the light and not in darkness. And we're supposed to be separate from the darkness. We're supposed to let our light shine that men may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. We're supposed to let the light shine by speaking the word. And it dispels darkness because darkness is the absence of light. So in the beginning, there was no light. That's why everything was dark. So God spoke light, but then he separated light from dark. This is not the same as day and night because that's later in chapter one that he uh, has the sun and the moon and the stars and that's night and day. This is a different light. And so it tells us um, in verse, um, in chapter eight of John, write it down, John eight and 12. It says, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Again, we don't walk in darkness. He says the ones that follow him, the ones that walk after him, the ones that imitate him, the ones that belong to him, the ones that abide in him, the ones that believe in him, shall not walk in, walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, in John 12 and 35, it says, then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Talking about himself. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Again, light and dark separated. John 12 and 46. Jesus says this. Write these verses down. He says, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Again, this is Jesus. So when you think about the verse of scripture in Genesis, when God says, when it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and then the next verse, uh, it tells us that he separated um, light from darkness. And so this is that light, right? And so um, you can go on and on. Um, uh, Acts 26 and 18, write that down. Um, the focus, I'm sorry, Acts 26, we have to start in verse 17, probably from verse 16, actually, hold on. It says in verse 16, but rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. This is a word to Paul, right? And it says to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, 
that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are now sanctified by faith that is in me. So Paul's assignment, our assignment as we're preaching the gospel is so that others' eyes are open. So they turn from darkness to light, the power of Satan to God, that they can receive forgiveness. This is the new birth. It is turning from darkness to light, from bondage to freedom, from the power of Satan to God. And so again, um, write down these verses of scripture so you can go back, um, write down Romans 13 and 12 and read around it. Read, um, write down um, 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. Write down 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. That's the one that talks about us not being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? None. We're separate. This is the separation. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, it says you are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Separation. Um. 1 Peter 2 and 9, write it down. It says you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, so you can go on and on uh, it, continuously. Uh, 1 John 1 and 5. Um, 1 John 2 and 8. Um, in 1 John 2 and 9. So write down all those verses of scripture because we have to stop. We're way over time. Um, but what this is showing us is really the focus on verses 1 through 4 in Genesis. This is showing us that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were together in the beginning. That the Word is Jesus and um, God spoke the Word and He created Let's us know that God first spoke light, and it was, and he separated light from darkness. And all through the Bible, that is what he's done. And as believers, we are children of light, and we are not to blend in with darkness, because light cannot blend in with darkness. Either we have to dim our light and hide under a lampshade, or, and, and blend in with the darkness, or we have to be light, which means that darkness has to be dispelled. So we're going to close out in prayer. If you have questions, you can uh, comment below off of those verses only. Um, or email me or text me, I'm mean, not text me, um, message me or, or however you can connect with me on social media. Information is underneath the YouTube channel. So we're going to continue in Genesis in our next session, but we're going to close out in prayer right here. Don't forget to share these with people that may want to continue in the word daily and get some words so that they can study and meditate on the truth and apply it to their life and become all that God purpose. Uh, we are to be fruitful and we are to walk in this word because this word is life and is power. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for giving us what we stand in need of, that we can grow, we can change, we can become all that you purpose, so that we can walk in your word and your will for your glory. So we honor you today, God, and we just pray that this word produces in us, that we are fruitful, that we are bringing glory and honor, Lord God, Father, to you, and Father, that others see our, the light in us and want to know what must they do to be saved. We honor you, we praise you, and we love you, God, for who you are, all that you've done and what you're doing, what you're about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on the next session of the sit-ups.